This engine bay is almost completely done. All we need to do is run wires for a boost gauge and run wires for an AFR gauge. And she's gonna run, baby. So what is going on, you guys? And welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I already just said it, but we're gonna be getting my AEM X-Series boost and wideband AFR gauges installed. Another thing that I have is I have the SMY dual gauge pod mount that replaces the little plastic trim piece in your gauge cluster, kind of makes it a little like Mickey Mouse ear gauges kind of thing. And I got the two little adapters that you need for the AEM X-Series gauges. And I'll link all the parts that I'm using in the description. Let's get these taken over to the table. That is finally looking less and less like a mess every day there's way less parts on here than there was before if you guys watched previous videos you would know so here's the gauge pod mount again it's gonna make everything super clean I'm gonna have boost and air fuel ratio two of the most important ones directly in front of my face while I'm banging through gears and that's exactly what I wanted so I'm super happy with this we'll see how it comes out once we get it installed then since the X series gauges are so thin there's these adapters that extend them so that they fit in these slots nice then another piece I got I'm not installing this today but this is a vent pod mount the reason I got this is because eventually I want a oil temp and oil pressure so one of them is gonna go in here and then I'll probably do pillar gauges or something like that. I don't know, I'm not really the biggest fan of pillar gauges, but I'll figure out somewhere to mount them. But in today's video, all we're gonna be doing for now is the boost and the wideband AFR gauge. So first things first, I'm gonna do the wideband one second and I'm gonna do the boost gauge first. The only reason I'm gonna do the boost gauge first is because I already actually have my boost sensor installed onto this little block that I mounted to my turbo here. And if you guys caught my rotated turbo kit install video, you would have seen me install that. It was a pretty easy install other than the fact that I had to drill into a brand new GTX 3576R. That was a little bit stressful, but other than that, it was a pretty basic install. You guys don't need to run the gauge directly off of a turbo. If you guys are installing a boost gauge, you can run a vacuum nipple directly to any positive pressure source that there is boost coming into from the turbo. So a vacuum nipple off the intake manifold would work. Or if you have a vacuum nipple on anywhere, basically on this side of the turbo on the outlet housing where the turbo is pushing air into the pipes, you could have the sensor mounted anywhere on that side of the turbo. I just said that way too many times but yeah hopefully that makes sense but like i said i have mine mounted directly to the compressor housing that way i am reading the true boost that the turbo is producing then in my access port it's going to read the relative boost which is the amount of boost that is actually making it through everything to the intake manifold so to start with this boost gauge install obviously you're going to open up the box you're going to have that little sensor in there that i just showed you then you're going to have the gauge itself it's probably not going to come in a plastic bag i just have mine in there so i don't scratch it you're going to have the wire harness a couple of crimps then you're also gonna have a little female end vacuum fitting and what you guys will do if you guys are not running it directly off of a little block like I did what you can do is you can thread the boost sensor into this little vacuum fitting here you can run the vacuum fitting and T into this line here off of your manifold that supplies vacuum for your fuel pressure regulator and everything like that it'll work the same it's just gonna read boost in the manifold rather than boost directly at the compressor housing so I am not gonna be using this vacuum nipple. But all three things here we will most likely be using. Not sure if I'm gonna use the crimps. I might solder wires, but we'll see. Now a lot of people like to start these installs from inside the car, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start in the engine bay, get the harness plugged in to the turbo. And then the way I'm planning on routing this boost sensor wire to the gauge is I'm gonna run it directly down to the frame here. It's gonna run up. I'm gonna drill a little hole in this main engine harness wire loom. And then I'm gonna feed the wire through there in behind the dash over to the driver's side and up to my gauge on the steering column. If this wire is long enough, honestly, it doesn't seem like it's very long, but we're gonna give it a go anyways. All right, so I actually popped out the whole little firewall seal here for the harness, just so I could get at it a little bit easier and drill that hole out. I ended up having to use the biggest freaking drill bit that I got, drilled it out so that the connector end of the harness would fit, which is this, stuck this through, pulled both wires all the way through it. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take this connector end 
of the harness and you're just gonna shove it in there and you can't really see, but just shove it straight down. And then we'll go inside and take a look at where it came out. All right, so now we're on the passenger side right under the glove box here and you can see the wire just coming out right there. I'm just gonna grab it and I'm just gonna pull it all the way through as far as I can. Here, this ends all the way out. Just make sure that end is all the way out too. Once you get that all the way through, I actually took it and tucked it up in behind that little HVAC mount there just because it's gonna be routing directly behind the dash in the middle there. What you're gonna do to route it behind the dash is just take a coat hanger or some type of hard metal piece that you can use to shove the wires through and you're just gonna tape the end of this connector right to the coat hanger and then not sure if you guys can see way up there but you're gonna shove it in behind the whole dash back there and then we'll see it come out the other side. All right, I don't know if you guys can see it up there but I can kind of see it. Let's see if I can reach up there and grab it. Now we can grab it down from there and start feeding the wire and the coat hanger all the way through and I think that's honestly all I got. Here we go. Now we got the whole harness pulled through. It looks like if I tuck it up there, I'm just going to have enough wire to get it up to where the gauge is going to be. We'll give a little bit of lighting there. That way you guys can see exactly where the wire is coming from. It actually slipped through a little bit higher up, maybe back there somewhere. And then I pulled it down through here. Now, if you check out the other side, this is under the glove box. You can see the wire is completely pulled through and it's tucked nicely up there. You don't even see it. All right. Now that we got those lines run, I'm just going to pop this whole whole top bezel piece out here. I already popped it out. Just take two hands on either side and pull. So now I can just pull with one hand and the entire bezel should come out. Now that I got the other bezel out, I'm just going to take this S and Y bezel and just kind of set it into place. Don't snap it in or anything yet. I'm sure the clips are very sensitive as they're just all plastic. So just kind of mocking it up to place. You can see where it's going to sit. But now that I got it mounted, I can actually see where I need the wires to come to on each side. You can see that little hole there that the factory one used to mount to take this back out of here i'm gonna want the wires running up directly to this hole here because that's right where the gauge sits and same thing with the other side so what i'm gonna do there's two phillips screws up top here to pop this gauge cluster out i'm just gonna take those screws out pop this out that way i can see if there's a way behind the gauge cluster to route the wires underneath and straight to here so once i pop the gauge cluster out here i actually found if you guys look on the left side here right under the gauge cluster there is actually a decent size hole there that you can run these wires up to so i I got my boost gauge here. It's gonna be on the left side and I got the connector plugged into it and both wires run down through that hole that I just showed you right there. Now, since I got those ones run, I'm actually gonna hop over and start installing the wideband sensor because I want my wideband sensor to run up through that same hole before I start getting the bezel piece in here. And then I'll show you guys how to install these X-Series adapters onto the gauges and how to wire them. So first things first, I'm gonna get this factory Rero 2 sensor pulled out of my ETS downpipe. The only reason I have this in here is because after this video, you'll see the first start video, but my first start video I filmed with this factory Rero 2 sensor in just so I could get the car running to make sure I had no issues before I put the wide band in. So I just have this hand tight. So we're just gonna thread this out of here. Now we're gonna route this O2 sensor out of here and we're gonna unplug it from the factory connector, which mounts up to your transmission. Now they got your factory rear O2 out. We're gonna get this AEM wideband sensor installed. They already got copper coat on the threads, so we're just gonna thread it in there. It's just time lapse through getting that installed. All right, so now that I got the AEM wideband sensor installed into the downpipe, I routed the wire up above the transmission brace there because that's how the factory O2 runs. And then since I unplugged the factory O2 sensor and we're gonna be running our own wires for the wideband sensor, I don't need this factory O2 wire anymore because the AEM wideband one is gonna be long enough to reach all the way up into the engine bay up there. So this harness you can see here actually goes into this little zip tie body clip there. And it's this loomed harness right here runs all the way up the side the transmission into the engine bay right by where I mounted my AOS. And I'll show you guys that up top. So this might be a pretty hard angle to get, but that connector runs up the side of the transmission right up under the pit stop mount there. So if you look under your pit stop mount, I already unplugged it, but there's one connector here. It's a four pin connector. And this end of the connector is the one that runs all the way down the side of the transmission for that O2 sensor. And then this end of the connector is the end that goes to your ECU. So I'm gonna pull this whole wire out here. I'm not gonna be able to film it, but I'm gonna pull this whole wire out 
out. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna run our AEM sensor wires up the side of the transmission under my AOS. Then I poked a coat hanger through the engine harness gasket there through the firewall because that comes out right next to your heater core and you can run it down under and it'll come out right next to where the wire for the boost gauge kind of comes out and comes this way behind the dash. So I'm gonna have to show you guys this on the ground, but basically the way this works is this connector is gonna plug directly into the wideband sensor and this solid harness is gonna run all the way to your gauge. Then it's gonna plug into the bottom port on your gauge. And then the other harness that comes with the sensor here is gonna be your power ground and your signal positive and signal negative wires. These are gonna plug into the back of the gauge just like that. And then those wires, which are all open-ended wires right now, are gonna run a power and a ground to power the gauge. And then you're gonna run two wires. I'm not really sure which ones they are yet. I need to look at the instructions and see which one is a signal positive and negative. But basically what we're gonna do is cut that O2 sensor connector for the harness that runs down the side of the transmission. We're gonna solder the signal positive and negative from here into the signal positive and negative for that connector, plug the connector in, and then we're gonna route this through the firewall so that it can route to the gauge. And I know that sounds confusing as hell right now, but it will make sense once I route all the wires and then I show you guys how I did everything. And then I'll time lapse through me getting all the wires run for the wideband sensor. And then I'll show you guys exactly how I ran them and where I ran them and what wires I had to tap into on the previous O2 sensor connector so that the ECU will be able to read what the wideband gauge is producing. And before I go any further with this, I just wanna say I've seen a lot of videos on how to install this gauge on YouTube. And all people do is they install the gauge and all they do is they delete all the other wires and they just run the power in the ground to make the gauge light up, which yes, that works and your gauge will read your wideband reading, but then your ECU is not seeing anything. So your ECU is not getting any signal from that wideband sensor whatsoever. So it's not gonna make any adjustments to your engine because it's not seeing anything. It's not able to get any fuel trims. It's not able to get any reading from the wideband sensor to tell if you're running rich or lean. So make sure you guys do this step because a lot of YouTube videos out there are wrong and you can't just run a power and a ground for the sensor unless you're still running a rear o2 sensor that'll read that but then what's the point in running the wideband okay so i was just going to run wires and go ahead and time lapse through it but i want to show you guys what i'm doing here to figure out what wires i need to tap into so that the ecu will see the signal that the wideband gauge is sending so here's your rear o2 sensor which plugs in here this would normally plug in under the car then this harness is the harness that runs all the way up the side of the transmission and it plugs into that that little harness right there that goes into the firewall. Now, the reason I have this run and I have the whole harness stripped out is because I'm trying to figure out which wires are the sensor signal positive, signal negative, which one is the power wire for the O2 sensor heater. So what I figured out so far is that this yellow and red wire is the 12 volts for your heater. So what I was gonna do, instead of running the wires for the gauge to the fuse box, and these are the wires I'm talking about that are open-ended like this, you would need to run this black ground and the red power to the fuse box, ground the black, and then put a little add a fuse in there and run this red wire to that for your power source. What I was going to do was I was just going to run the red power source directly to here because there is 12 volts on this wire, but I'm not going to do that. And I'll show you guys why I'm not going to do that first. I plug my little makeshift pin out here into the yellow and red wire on this connector. And I got my multimeter hooked up here so you can see inside of the car and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So this multimeter now should be reading the voltage that this red and yellow wire is getting because I have the multimeter grounded to the battery and we're reading voltage at this connector. So I'm not sure if you guys can see this, but I have the multimeter set up up there. And right now it is reading 2.1 millivolts, which is nothing, it's basically zero. But now if I put the key in the car and turn it to power up the relay, turn it, you'll see that multimeter now has 12.3 volts. But this is why I'm not gonna wire it to that wire. If I turn the key off, that voltage stays there for a good five or six seconds until that relay clicks off. And I want my gauges to shut off as soon as ignition power is cut, just like the gauge cluster does and just like my boost gauge is gonna do because I'm gonna wire that to the fuse box down there. So if you listen here, I'm not sure if the audio is gonna pick it up very good, but you'll actually hear when I shut the key off, you'll hear it click right when the voltage goes. There's one. 
There's a second click and now the voltage is gone. So that click is actually the relay shutting off in the relay box on the passenger side. This is gonna be super hard to pick this up because I'm doing this off my phone. Don't mind the cut on my hand. That was uh, my downpipe did that to me and it hurt like a bitch. So right here is the connector at your rear O2 sensor, which is the one I was just testing at. So you have your yellow and red power, your blue, your white, and your white and black. So this yellow and red wire comes up here. It feeds power also to your front O2 sensor here. Then it comes up if we follow this white and black wire all the way. Oh, we got to switch pictures. This picture might even be a little bit more blurry because it's so zoomed in. But if we follow that yellow and red wire all the way up here, turns into white and black wire. We're going to follow it all the way along up to this relay, which is that relay that you guys would have just heard clicking off. And this relay gets energized on this side to pull that switch over in the relay, which then gets its power on this wire here, which if we follow that one down, it's a white and red wire, which comes all the way up to this 15 amp fuse. Now this 15 amp fuse is also fed by, we follow that wire all the way, it is fed by a 30 amp fuse. So in AEM's instructions here, they tell you to run the power wire on a switched five amp fuse. So in this wiring diagram, if I go to that wire, it's showing we go off of a relay that takes a good 10 seconds to power off, which is supplied by a 30 amp fuse and a 15 amp fuse. So if there's any type of circuit overload whatsoever, I don't want to blow up a $300 gauge. So I'm going to run that power wire to the fuse box, just like I'm going to do on the boost gauge, just so that we don't pop a transistor or something like that inside of the air fuel ratio gauge. After I realized that was the power wire, the next thing I needed to find was the signal positive and signal negative. So my ECU will get a reading from my wideband gauge. So if you check out this very far right wire here, you can't read that, but it says white and black. That white and black wire, if we follow it all the way up, goes directly over all the way to your ECU right there. Converts into a red and white wire right before the ECU. So that white and black wire, I'm not 100% sure on this, and I'm not sure if it's gonna be polarity sensitive, but that is gonna be one of your signal wires for sure, because that one goes directly to your ECU. Now here is where it gets super confusing. So the blue and white wires both come up here and if you see those little dotted cylinders there, that means those wires are shielded together. So ignore that that blue wire goes that way because that's for a WRX only. On the SCI, that blue wire comes up. It is shorted to the white wire, but then coming into the black wire is also a junction connector, which also goes to your front oxygen sensor by that junction connector right there. And if you follow this junction connector all the way following the red and black wire that goes to the junction connector, which is where the blue wire goes from the oxygen sensor, it goes directly to the ECU. So again, I would think that that is going to be another signal wire. Then if you follow this white wire that is shorted to the blue wire there, you follow that white wire all the way. It gets very hard to see here, but keep following it all the way to the ECU. You will see that it goes directly to to the ECU as well. So my little educated guess here, judging by this wiring diagram, is that the blue and white wires are gonna be your signal positive and the white and black wire is gonna be your signal negative, which I know is super confusing and that is actually super confusing to me too. I don't know why they would short two together. Maybe it's just because it's giving the ECU a signal for the front and rear together. But again, I'm not 100% sure. All right, I'm gonna pop this clip in the video just to show you guys that I made a mistake and it's honestly a good thing because I learned from it and this will help Help you guys major league because you won't have to make the same mistake I did. You'll get it 100% right the first time. So on this harness earlier in the video, I was talking about the fact that the blue and white wires were shorted together, but that's not actually the case. This wire that comes off of the blue wire is connected to the blue wire and making contact, but on the white wire, it's actually wrapped in this gray insulation and it just shields this white wire. So it's not actually making contact. It just wraps around the insulation for the white wire. I'm assuming maybe that's because this is a communication wire. Maybe the shield around it helps us send a cleaner signal, but I'm not 100% sure. But what I do know is you do not need to short the blue and white wires together. So I'll show you guys exactly what I mean on the connector on the car. Just to make this super simple, white and black signal negative, solid white is your signal positive. You don't need the blue wire and you don't need the yellow and red wire. You can tape those off, they can go to the side. All you need to do is cut this harness off the O2 sensor, solder in the white as your signal positive and the white and black as your signal negative. And the way I figured this out was when I started the car, 
I had the blue and white soldered together going to the white signal positive wire and my access port was just stuck on 8.5 AFR. It wasn't reading the same as what my AFR gauge was reading once I got the car running. So I was all confused. I had no idea what was going on. Then I decided to try and cut the solder on the blue and white wires that I had. And then I twisted the white wire together separately on its own. Then I fired the car up and the rear O2 monitor that I had my tuner add onto my access port read perfectly. It read the exact same as what my analog AEM gauge was reading. So yeah, I just wanted to pop this clip in there quick just so that you guys know exactly how to do this. And yeah, I messed up, but I learned from it. Obviously, I'll never make that mistake again. And hopefully this helps you guys because then you guys just get to get it right the first time because you have this video. So yeah, one more time before I end this clip, white and black is your signal negative. Solid white is your signal positive. You do not need the blue and you do not need the yellow and red. So in the video, I got everything run with the blue and white shorted together. But this clip is filmed a couple weeks after that video was made. So now I'm just gonna go ahead off camera outside of this video and I'm gonna get that white wire soldered together and everything should read perfectly fine. And before I end this clip, I'm just gonna pop a little visual of my access port with the car running, reading the same as what my AFR gauge reads. But I'm not gonna put sound in it because you guys gotta wait for the first start video to get a sound clip. Now let's get back to the install. So I'm gonna cut all these wires back here. Then I'm gonna solder my signal positive off of the AEM gauge to the white and blue wire right here. Then I'm gonna solder the white and black wire to the signal negative off the AEM gauge. Then this connector is just gonna plug directly into where it goes back into the factory ECU. The reason I'm doing this is because I don't wanna pull apart the whole dash to cut wires at the factory ECU. I wanna leave the ECU wiring exactly how it is. I don't wanna mess with any of that. So I'd rather just do it here in the engine bay where I can cut, splice in, and just plug and play into the factory O2 sensor connector. So now to show you guys what each wire does on this AEM harness, I read the instructions for once, so now I actually know. The red is gonna be your 12 volt switch power with a five amp fuse. Your black is gonna be your ground. This is just what powers and lights up the gauge. Then your white wire is gonna be your analog signal positive, and your brown wire is gonna be your analog signal negative. Then the green with black stripe and white with black stripe wires are only gonna be if you're running a AEM standalone ECU. So I'm gonna cut those back and tuck them into the harness and tape them up. Now I'm not really sure what this blue wire is for, but on their wiring diagram here, it just goes to pin two on your OBD2 port. Maybe that's for if you guys are running a tuner that just plugs into your OBD2, but it's not an actual piggyback like the access port is. And maybe it would just display a reading based off of this one wire off of pin two on your OBD2 port. It would just display that reading onto your little tuner device. But we have an access port that's piggyback, so we're not gonna use that wire either. Either. So we're gonna cut back the green and black, white and black, and the blue wire. And then we're gonna be using the brown, white, red and black wires. So what I'm gonna do is I got two wires here that are gonna run through the firewall of the car, two near the fuse box where I'm gonna solder in the wires for this end of the gauge harness. So first things first, I gotta get these wires soldered to my wire extensions that are gonna go into the cap of the car. All right, so I got these two wires soldered in. They're both white wires. So what I did was I put a black piece of tape on the end that's for the signal negative. And I taped off my power wire right here. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna electrical tape these all together so it makes it nice and clean. And then we can start routing the harness from the wideband sensor up the side of the transmission up to there. And then I can plug this in and get these wires pushed at the same time as the connector for the wideband sensor that plugs into the gauge right here. And we'll just push them both through that little firewall gasket at the same time with the coat hanger so that it routes to the driver's side so that we can run it up to the steering column and get the gauge installed. All right, so this is gonna be horrible lighting again, but I figured I'd stop the time-lapse just to show you guys where the wires came out. This is on the driver's side of the car, right by the gas pedal there. It came out just behind the evaporator core heater box, whatever you wanna call it. And I'm basically just gonna get this tape 
taken off the harness and then I will just pull the coat hanger through on the engine bay side. There we go. So the tape is taken off. The harness is loose from the coat hanger now. So I'll just pull the coat hanger back through the other way and I'll keep pulling this harness through this way. Oh shit. It looks like my wires came off. This is just the connector end. Where's the wires? Oh, they're up there. I see them. Came off though. See if I can reach them and pull them through by hand. Come on, baby. There's one and there is two. All right, I gotta pull those through lots because they should have been matched to what this was at. This lighting sucks. I got lights all over the place. Okay, so now that both of these are pulled through, I'm gonna go in the engine bay and just yank that coat hanger out. Hopefully no wires come with it. Try not to scratch anything while I'm at it. Hey, there we go. Now we got the wires run in there. I'm gonna pull it all the way through on the other side and then I'm gonna wrap that braided loom around this just like I have in the rest of the engine bay and we'll get this plugged in to the O2 sensor connector right under the AOS there. Then with this wire, I'm gonna get this one run down the side of the transmission to the wideband sensor on the exhaust. That way then I can just pull the excess through the inside of the car and then run it up to the gauge on the dash. Well, I just realized in my big rat's nest of wires here that the tape mark came off of my signal negative wire and both my wires are white. I knew that was gonna happen. So what I gotta do to figure out which one is my signal negative is if we hop back in the engine bay here, I got a little pin out plugged into the pin on the connector that I got shoved through the firewall and I got it on the pin for the black and white wire, which was my signal negative. So that one there. Then I got a couple little alligator clips extending wires into the cab of the car. Then what I did was I got one end of my multimeter attached to that alligator clip that's going to the pin on the connector. I got my multimeter on a continuity test here. So if I put my multimeter into one end, it doesn't beep. That means there's no continuity on that wire. So that's the wrong wire. I go to this wire. It should beep. There it is. This is my signal negative wire. So I got to mark this with some black tape again, just so I don't forget. All right. So now that I got my signal negative marked here, I actually ran both wires for the AFR gauge up through that same spot that the boost wires are coming from, but I got them run to this side because that's where my AFR gauge is gonna be. Now, since I got these wires run to the right spot, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna actually get the gauges installed into the bezel. I'll get the gauges plugged in, install the bezel all the way. That way I know exactly how much wire needs to be sitting down here and it'll be 100% installed. And then we could start installing everything on the bottom, getting the add a fuse little pieces put in the fuse box so that we can wire the power for both gauges. And then that way, if I get them set up like this, then I can zip tie up all the excess wire underneath the dash. First thing I'll show you guys before we get these gauges put into the gauge pod is how you're gonna set them up so that they fit in the gauge pod. Now the AEM X series gauges are a little bit bigger of a face, so they don't just slide into the gauge pod like a normal gauge would. They're gonna come with this little piece on just that held them in the box. Just take your two kind of hand threaded nut things off of there. Take this little plastic piece off. You don't need it no more. Then this is the SMY AEM X series gauge adapter. So in the bag, it comes with the little gauge adapter and two rubber bands, depending on the size that you need to make it fit in the gauge pod. First thing we're going to do is get these two studs on the gauge put through the adapter and it is off centered. So if you put it in one way, it won't line up very good with the gauge. So make sure you got it facing the way where it's completely flush all the way around. Then you're going to take your two little nuts there and just thread them back on, get them nice and tight with your fingers. And then once you got them on, your gauge is pretty much ready to go into the gauge pod. All you need to do is decide which rubber band you're gonna use. Now I believe this smaller rubber band is gonna stretch more. So it's gonna work if you need a very tight space. And if this is sitting super loose in there, you're gonna need a bigger rubber band. So let's go check out the gauge pod and we'll see which rubber band we need. So just grab the gauge pod just to mock it up. And it looks like it's pretty loose. It's got a lot of space in there. So I don't think that small rubber band is gonna be enough to hold it in place. Place. So we are going to put the big rubber band on there. And all you do is put the rubber band on until it seats completely around your little gauge adapter there. If you guys are not running the X series ones and you're running regular gauges, this rubber band would probably just go around the whole gauge assembly itself. But now that the rubber band's on there, I'm going to get a rubber band on the boost gauge and then we will get the wires plugged in to both gauges, get them set into the cluster, and then we'll run the wires down through the dash from there to get them wired in so that we got gauges. Okay, that looks dope. AFR on this side, boost on this side. This is awesome. You can literally see those while you're banging through gears, your eyes are gonna be right on those two gauges. AFR is one of the most important ones. I'm probably gonna put an oil temp or something here, and then maybe I'll get the oil pressure and a couple other gauges up top there one day. But for now, AFR and boost, that's the two gauges I wanted. And this is sweet because you barely have to take your eyes off your speedometer and RPM because they're right there. Oh, that looks so good. I'm so happy with how that came out. So I put the big rubber bands on those adapters 
adapters that I showed you guys, plug the gauges in, pretty much push them all the way in, and they're sitting nice and sturdy. Those rubber bands hold them pretty good. So now that we got those completely mounted, all I did was just kind of push the clips all into place and then smack it in a couple times. And this bezel fits up pretty nice for the most part. There's a little bit of a gap in a couple spots, but it's pretty good for a 3D printed piece. So now that we got that done, we can hop underneath here and start getting to the stuff that actually matters. This whole rat's nest down here. First thing I'm gonna show you guys here is gonna be fuse locations and where you're going to run these wires to. So first thing you're gonna do, grab a test light, grab the ground for your test light, and you can just hook it up to the little door jam thing there. Then you're gonna take your test light, and what I'm actually gonna do is test these open fuse areas to see if they have power with ignition. So I'm gonna get the key in, turn the key on here. So first fuse I'm gonna check is this fuse up here. I have the key on right now, so that is ignition power. And on this bottom one, I got power. Top, you're not gonna have anything until you put the fuse in. So I got power on that one. Now I'm gonna leave the test light on it. You can still see the test lights lit up red on the top of the screen there. Turn the key off. And now that I turn the key off, that light goes out. Back on and the light comes back on. So that means you got power with ignition on that one. Now we're gonna test this bottom one here and we got nothing on the bottom port. Camera out of here a bit to get in there. Oh, there we go. You can see on the light there, it is lit up red. Now if I take the key, shut it off, we lose power with ignition. So that fuse holder is gonna work too. So what I'm gonna do, since I have a red wire here that I use for the lights in my engine bay, I wasn't using a fuse holder before. I just cut a little slit into there and stuck it into the fuse. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run the two gauges off of one fuse source and then I'm gonna run my hood scoop lights off the other one. So I know I got ignition power on both those fuse spots. So I will show you guys what we're gonna use in there. So if you guys go to your local auto parts store, you can pick up these little add a fuse kits. And basically what they do is they will insert into your fuse location. Now the way this is gonna work is once you insert that in, you are going to put your power wire directly to this wire that they have pre-installed here. I don't know if I'm gonna go with the crimp that comes pre-installed or if I'm gonna solder it. I might just go with the crimp because it's on the inside of the car. It's not gonna get wet or anything. The crimp should work just fine. So now what I did was I took my power wire for the boost gauge and the power wire for the AFR gauge, crimped them both into the crimp that's already installed on this add a fuse piece. When you crimp them on, just give them a little tug, make sure they're in there good. Then I took both ground wires for the AFR and the boost gauge, twisted them together, put them both in this little ground crimp here, crimped them on. Again, give them a little tug to make sure they're good. Now what I'm gonna do to this little ground is we're gonna cut the end of it just so it's able to expand a bit. Let's go with right there. That way it should slide on the bolt easier. Now, since I'm not gonna be running the blue or the green and black and white and black wires, I'm just gonna pull this back a bit, snip them right there. And those can hang out in the harness. I don't need those ones and they're not connected to anything. So they're not gonna short out together. But we do need the white and brown on the AFR gauge. And on the boost gauge wire, since the access port already reads boost pressure in the manifold and we have this set up on the compressor, I'm not running the brown and white wire to the ECU so we can just snip these ones back as well. The only reason I'm running this boost gauge is because I wanna be able to see compressor housing boost compared to intake manifold boost that the access port's gonna display. That way you can see the difference between what the turbo is actually producing and how much of it makes it to the manifold. Plus that's an easy way to see if you have any boost leaks. Now I'm not gonna install my signal positive and negative for this AFR yet. I'm gonna get everything installed and then I'm gonna route this wire and tuck it up under the dash and then I will solder these two on or crimp them probably probably because it's inside and they're not gonna get wet. So I don't care about having heat shrink and solder on there. You still get a good connection with a crimp as long as the wires don't move whatsoever. All right, so now since we got these power wires made, I'm gonna route this little add a fuse under there and get it pushed into the spot where we wanna route it right there. Then for the ground wire, I'm actually gonna be grounding it on the mount for the fuse panel and the hood latch piece here. I'll show you guys where that bolt is. This is actually gonna be super hard to see, but if you look at the fuse panel from here, it's gonna be right in behind there. It's that little bolt on the bracket right there. So all you gotta do is get a little 10 mil ratcheting wrench and shove it in here and then you can just loosen that bolt off. And once you get it loose enough that enough of the threads are showing, you can then take your ground and shove it onto that bolt. I'm not gonna be able to record this because I don't have seven hands. So I'm gonna get this on and then I'll show you guys how it looks after. All right, so I ended up just sending it here and I got a good like 98% of this done. And I hate when people on YouTube do this and I just did it, but I will show you guys absolutely everything I just did. First things first, we will start at the fuse box. Don't worry about this bottom one. That is for my under the hood lights that I have wired to a switch right here. Don't worry about those. Now, this one up top here, I put two 
five amp fuse is in because in the AEM instructions, it actually tells you to put a five amp fuse on each circuit going to each gauge. Since I ran both power wires for each gauge to one little fused block here, I put two five amp fuses on this little add a fuse piece. Then, like I showed you guys before, both of them are grounded on that ground for the mount for the fuse box there. Now let's hop under and kind of show you guys how I wired everything. This is gonna be hard though. First things first, let's start at the center of the car. All of those wires that came from the back there, I routed them on the right side of this body clip here and they all come out right up right there. Oh, this is gonna be such bad angles. So the wires were way too long. So as you can see right there, I had to kind of fold them together and zip tie them up out of the way. As you can see right in front of the OBD plug there, I also had to fold a bunch of it together. Then I'm not 100% done cleaning stuff up. I still gotta zip tie this power wire up a little bit. But then I ran the boost gauge wires out over to here and the AFR wires too. That way my power comes up to here, splices into both. The ground goes to that ground on the frame over there that mounts the fuse box. Then I have both the signal positive and signal negative wires coming down here. And I also ran my white wires that I ran from the other side, kind of just following all of these wires all the way along. So I got these two soldered again. Your brown is for your negative and your white is for your signal positive. So I'm going to get these zip tied up, tucked away so they're not going to get in my way when I'm banging through gears with this clutch pedal here. But now that I got those gauges wired for the most part and all tucked up, except for the signal positive and negative wires there, but I'll do that in a sec. I want to make sure these gauges power up and that they give a reading. Obviously not going to start the car yet, but you guys will get to see the first start in probably the next video, to be honest. We'll have my first start video. So let's get this key turn and we got power, baby. Let's go. Wideband sensor's got to heat up and the boost sensor is reading negative 0.6 because there's absolutely nothing. See if the sensor is able to heat up. Hey, there we go. I still got an ABS light. I got to fix that. Now let's just make sure we lose power with these with ignition right away. Perfect. Sweet. Everything's all good. We'll have to make sure they really work once I get the car running. Now, one thing that I will mention when you wire this wideband gauge the way that I just wired it is you're going to need a ProTune in order to actually be able to data log your wideband readings so that your ECU can actually see them. Just like when you install the fuel pressure sensor, you're going to plug them into your passenger side TGV harness. All it's doing is since you deleted your TGVs, you're using that connector as a new input to the ECU so that it can data log. You just change the name of the parameter and it reads fuel pressure instead of your TGV duty cycle or whatever they use to run the TGVs. Same thing with the way I wired the wideband sensor, but instead of the TGV, we're using the rear O2 plug as the input for the wideband into the ECU. So now that this AFR sensor has its own heater within the circuit from the gauge to the wideband sensor, if you go on your access port and you hit read codes, you are most likely going to have a code for the rear O2, but I don't right now, which is weird. Probably have to start the car first and then I'll get a code for the rear O2 sensor. Probably like a circuit low or something like that for the heater because I don't have that power wire run to it. So when you get a pro tune on a dyno, your tuner will actually install a gauge monitor on your access port that reads your rear O2 air fuel ratio, which is going to be your wideband gauge. Your air fuel sensor one ratio on the access port is actually your short-term fuel trims. So that is the air fuel ratio on your front O2 sensor that sits on the headers right before the up pipe. All right, now that I showed you guys everything inside the car and I zip tied those two signal positive and negative wires up and tucked them away so you can't see them anymore, I will show you guys what I did in the engine bay. So in the engine bay, I drilled a hole in the little firewall gasket for the wire harness there. Got both wires coming out of it. I wrapped them in that braided wire loom just like I did with everything else in the engine bay again. Then this wire that comes out basically just plugs into the O2 sensor input and loops back into this wire harness gasket here. So it literally just comes out in the engine bay and loops straight back into it. Then this wire is the wire that goes to my wideband sensor. And I'll show you guys exactly how I ran that. It actually turned out super clean, almost exactly like the factory O2 sensor wire. Starting from the top here, I zip tied the harness to that little bracket next to the clutch line there. Then it goes down the transmission and I will show you guys how it routes from the bottom. So now under the car here, I'm gonna try and give you guys the best angles I can, but it's gonna be pretty 
pretty hard. If you could see up there without the light flashing like crazy. In behind my little dump tube here for the AOS, I zip tied it on all the factory brackets for the factory O2 sensor. And I pretty much ran it with this whole transmission line the whole way. Then on the very bottom here, it got zip tied to that little bracket there. And then from there, it basically comes back to the other factory bracket. And then right on this plastic piece on the wide band is zip tied to another factory bracket. And then it goes over top of the transmission brace right to where the wide band sensor mounts into the ETS downpipe. So now that I showed you guys how to get everything installed on the inside of the car, where the gauges mount, and I showed you guys how to route everything in the engine bay and how to wire everything, I need to get a base map revision sent to me tomorrow from my tuner just to get rid of that rear two sensor code. I didn't have the code in this video, but I filmed the first start for this thing and my gauge install at the same time. So make sure you guys stay tuned for the next video. We got this thing running. I was so hyped when we got this thing running. The boys came over, we got it started and it is loud. Like it's a good thing I live in the country because I'm pretty sure I'd wake up the whole city if I lived in the city with this thing. So I'll stop rambling on now. Peace out you guys. Make sure you stay tuned for that first start. I will catch you guys in the next one.